Well, Wayne, the barefoot mechanic, had his fun with the pressure washer and he helped me to get this cuts and cab into the shop here. So let's see what we've got. So this tag here, just above the firewall, it looks like this side I've got a date, 17839. And then this must be just a serial number. 1089. It, it would make sense that that's a date. 17th of the 8th month, 1939. Uh, it looks to me like the original color might have been this dark blue-green. And then it appears that at some point someone got hold of a pot of white paint which was slapped on with a brush. And of course there's lots of rust as well. <laughs> I don't see any evidence of that dark blue-green color on this whole front piece though. It's also got that white paint. It looks like it's also been slapped on with the brush. But it would seem that the underlying color is a brown shade. So, I don't know, it's a bit of a mystery to me. Maybe this whole piece came off of another truck. You can also see that blue color here, but the dashboard is a brown color again. So I don't know, maybe the thing was two-tone. <laughs> I don't know. What's interesting to observe though is look at the dashboard here, this section here, and the glove box on the other side there is actually symmetrical. So this insert here could be taken out, fitted there. It almost looks like it was designed from the beginning to be either a left-hand drive or a right-hand drive by just interchanging these sections. That same brown color is on this window trim here. Eh? And then it looks like the actual side windows and the mechanism is intact. It's a bit stiff, but it works. So that could be sorted out, which is nice. And this is also still in one piece. Look at this wood trim here above the rear window. Running across here, looks like oak. And those tiny holes you see in there, they're not actually from rot or anything. Those are little nail holes. So yeah, it was used to hold the interior upholstery or something in place. What do I know about these things? But I tell you, cars and trucks with wooden trim in it, that surely is a sign of something that's very old. <laughs> 80 plus years down the line and this piece of oak trim is still in good nick. Amazing. Bottom of the doors on both sides it's got some pretty nasty rot. So we'll have to give that some attention. <laughs> yeah, if you look at it from the other side, you can see the light shining through. <laughs> yeah, the floor has pretty much had it. As is typical with these things. <laughs> so some nasty rot and rust in here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this floor out completely. Start from scratch. It's a strange setup actually. That floor continues all the way through to the back here. And then of course here's a big gap rusted away. But I'm just going to cut this off. I don't really understand what the purpose of this was or how it really worked. I don't know these trucks at all. Because it seemed like this would have extended in under the load bin that was sitting here. So I would like to take the doors off. But you can see here that the door hinges are actually riveted on. So the only way to get the door off would be to remove this pin here. Well... I'm pretty sure the last time this pin was removed was 80 plus years ago. It's a lot of rust here. So I think I'm going to have a lot of fun <laughs> trying to get these pins out. 
This mechanism here is what holds the hood down or the bonnet. And there's a lever on the inside. And it still works perfectly. How about that? <laughs> The air conditioner is stuck, <laughs> but which requires some further investigation. I'm going to have to crawl in underneath the dashboard, check out those linkages. With a bit of luck, we can get that going again. And then this is also interesting. It's only got one wiper blade on this side, which on this side, this truck is right hand drive. But there's a blank on that side, so you could easily change it from here to there. Which again makes me think this truck must have been designed right from the beginning to be either left hand drive or right hand drive. Nice that I still have these bits. It looks like I could make it work as well. We will have to see. It's, uh, we still even have the original wiring here with the cloth covering. It's actually pretty amazing to think that back then they didn't have any plastics like we know today and here's the original headlight dim switch what's the bet that it will still probably work as well <laughs> We still have the original coil sitting here. And this must have been the handbrake cable. Well then, life's too short now to be struggling with rusty fasteners. Look here, this is the original handbrake. But Tough, but it still works. And this lever, that's for the bonnet catch. I think I need to take this back window out before it falls out. The rubbers are completely perished. Only problem is it's a little bit difficult to do this if you're one guy. So I might end up breaking it anyway. But let's give it a try. Ah. Wonder if I shouldn't wait for somebody to come and help me. Haha, <laughs> got it in one piece. So I've got a bit of a problem with this door here. Yeah? It doesn't want to close and if I squeeze it into place or force it into place you can see that the door gap right down there in the bottom is massive in comparison to what we have up here so something is out of whack <laughs> but these are the bones I have to play with it's not like I have the option to go and look for a donor cab anywhere else so we will just have to make a plan and see what we can do to push or maneuver or persuade things back into place <laughs> so let me get this thing up into the sky so we can see what it looked like from below Yeah, so I'm just sitting here looking at all of this and hoping it doesn't fall on me. <laughs> um, 
Yes, I don't know. I think I'm just gonna cut all of it out. It's just such a mess. This section here below the door, what do you call it? I mean, it's bent inwards and crushed and distorted. And never mind the terrible rot and rust. Look at it here. That bracket there, that was the original cab mount, but everything is broken here. <laughs> and rotted. There's still a little bit of the back cab mounting there on the left hand side. But there yeah, across on the other side. <laughs> no man. There's a hole here in the middle, rusted away. And that sole piece or sole plate. On that side, nah, look at the state of it. Look here on this side. <laughs> what a mess! And now that it's hanging from the top, you can also see, look here, this door gap has closed up down here in the bottom. So oh, that's an indication, of course, that everything below is loose and moving around. <laughs> I mean, look here, this whole section can move. It's not attached to the floor at all. So now, of course, if I cut the complete bottom out, there's going to be very little holding the bottom end together, especially this section and that section. It could just open up some. Um, so the sensible thing, the first thought that comes to mind would be to weld the doors on here, and that will hold it together. But that's going to bring me some other challenges because with the doors while it's shut, I, I wouldn't have any access from the outside. Uh, that's going to be difficult. So I'm trying to come up with another idea. I think what I'm going to do for a start, I'm just going to, this is a very strong point, this is still good, same there. So let me just install a brace from this point across to that. It will also give me something to rest this whole thing. I can rest it on a trestle. Well, this old rusty piece of 3x2 is perfect for the job. <laughs> and it also blends in nicely with the rest of the picture. So I'm just going to tack that on quickly. Right, so now that's not only going to provide me a point to rest it on when I stick it on a trestle so I can get everything off the bloody floor also braces me this way so it is a good start I guess I think I'm going to hoist the cab up now so that I can stick a trestle in underneath there Okay, so far so good. Now what? <laughs> so I've got another trestle in the back here as a temporary arrangement because I can't leave it there when I cut the floor out there will be nothing <laughs> to rest on it. Um, so I've got it, the cap also suspended from the roof, only the back side of the cap. 
So I can actually slightly lift the back end of the cab and it won't be resting on that trestle anymore. And since the back end of the cab is hanging off of the roof, this section here is actually can, can move. I can move it where I want it. Because the cab's not resting on it at all. That trestle down there is just temporary support. Um, and I think I'm still gonna do something here with the doors to keep it where it needs to be. So here's my plan for maintaining this door gap and bracing everything. I've made up these two angle bar brackets line up there with a hole to drill through them. And now my plan is to weld them on here, like so. And that'll keep everything together. But if I want to open the door, I can do that by removing the bolt. And then the hole will serve, serve as a reference if I close it again. I think that can work well. So I've checked that my door gap is parallel all the way. And also that my body lines here, there, line up. I had to put a clamp in there to help me keep things in place. So I think I can weld on that bracket. I've got the same here on the other side. Let's see how this works. Undo my bolt. I can open my door. And now I can get it to line up again in its original position. This man. I think that's going to work very well. Okay, let's do some cutting of rusted 1939 American steel. Okay, so these pieces are out of the way and I can actually now pull this out because the back of the cab is hanging off of the roof and I need to take this out to get rid of all this rotten mess. But I'm not sure that I'm too comfortable with this whole cab hanging off the roof at the back side here and me crawling in under there. So I think I'm going to make another plan. So I came up with this contraption to make myself feel a little bit better here. <laughs> uh, I just made it up from some scrap box section. And it's now essentially acting like a leg. I've welded it to the cab corners on both sides. I believe that's quite a strong point. So now I will get support from this. So with that in place, I can now take out this trestle. So that I can cut out this rotten floor. And I've still got it attached to my roof beam just to act as a safety. <music> 83 year old rust and dust.
Right, let's cut out some more of this crap. Так. The only floor left now is this one on which this pile of rusty junk is lying. In here there's nothing left. Not that there was much to start with. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever been able to stand upright inside a truck cab. It's a whole new life experience for me. <laughs> now I have a pile of rusty American steel to be, to be replaced with new imported Chinese steel. We used to make our own steel here in South Africa for many many years. We are rich in iron ore. We still are. Um, huge company called Iscor, Iron, iron and Steel Corporation of South Africa. Well things have changed. Those plants have been left to fall apart. All the iron ore is being exported to China and then it comes back as steel at a great price. Not a great price, at a large price, a big price, a high price. Why? I think I better not answer that question. This is a car channel. <laughs> Let's not get into the politics. Peace, brother. So I've got some pieces of square tubing clamped in here now. This is uh, 32 mil, post 32 mil, inch and a quarter. Um, Got to start somewhere. <laughs> Um, for the beginnings of some sort of a frame in here, I've been cutting back a lot of bad metal. Not that there's a lot of good metal left. <laughs> um, I tell you, it's going to be a fight with this cab. If it wasn't such a rare thing, I wonder if I would have bothered. So anyway, let me uh, get a few tacks on this thing and I can take it out again. To check things out some more. Fantastic. Do you hear that noise? I didn't open the gas. Well done, Duffy. <coughs> Okay, let's try again. Maybe this time I'll get a proper well, little tack. <laughs> that sounds better. Alright, I think that is enough for now. You take this thing out. I made up one here for the left hand side as well, so this one, I used the right hand side one as, as the pattern and this one is a mirror image of that one and it fits quite well, so that means the cap is still pretty straight <laughs> and now I'm actually starting to come up with a cross member here I'll show you, try and show you, there's not much space inside the cab here, so I'm just standing here trying to show you that's going across to the other side. 
So I can roll that up, we'll just tack it together and I'll starting to get some strength here now. So before I tack it, let's just take a quick peek through here and we can see that that back bar is parallel to the one in the front here, this rusty one which is my temporary one. So that means everything is nice and straight. Awesome! So I need to go and cut a piece that fits in from here to here, in between these two side pieces. And I prefer actually to use two steel rulers to do that, like this, instead of a tape measure. So I can butt that one on that side, then I've got a little clamp here, and then I can slide this one until it touches where I want it to be, clamp it together. <laughs> There we go. Now I've got my rulers clamped together and that's the length my piece needs to be. Much more accurate and easier and better than a tape measure I think which is all floppy. Especially if you're a single hander. <laughs> I think I've got enough of a frame in here now to hold this thing together. I've welded it here to the, the original cab mount was sitting here. There was some good metal left there. So I've got it welded on there. Same that side. Original cab mount sat there. It's quite rusty up here but down there I found some pretty good metal so it's welded on there. It continues all the way through to the front onto this brace as well. Also welded there, got some cross braces, so I think it's good enough. I think we can actually go and try this cab on the frame for the first time. So this mounting point here was for the original Isuzu load bin or load box, but it's now in my way, so I'm just going to have to cut it off. So I got the cap 
rigged up again and tied to the chain hoist. So let's uh, see what happens. Gotta cut these legs off. And I can take this one off as well, it served its purpose. Okay, first time trying it on the frame, that's exciting. Let's see how it's gonna go. <laughs> okay, so the weight is off the chain hoist, cab is resting on the frame, so we can do the first evaluation. <laughs> Currently the cab is tilted a lot forward, um, and I'll show you one of the problems just now. Uh, also, of course, the fenders needs to lift, probably somewhere like there. But I can also see here with the fender marks and lineups that the whole cab needs to move, move backwards. If we look here where the fenders meet the cab, let me just zoom in. You can see that this knuckle there needs to go right in there. So the cab does need to move backwards by about an inch and a half or so. And if we take a look in here, you can see this cross brace is resting on top of this knuckle, or what is this called, <laughs> that sits above the prop shaft. So if we do come back, this will drop down, because currently there's a maybe a two inch gap here between the frame and my cross brace. So yeah, I'm going to move this whole cap backwards a little bit, then we can look at things again. So I've got the cab moved back a few inches and I've bolted the fender to the cab. It's lining up here pretty nicely now. So things are starting to look better. That wheel is sitting quite nicely in the wheel arch there. Um, and of course, yeah, you can see the whole truck is <laughs> nose down. That's of course because the front suspension is down on its stops and in the back it's still original. So I think I'm just going to jack up the front so that we can level out the frame to get a better feel. <laughs> yeah, so I know it looks like an off-road thing now, 
But ignore this gap for now. I just want to see how the cap sits in relation to the frame when the frame is level. Remember, I'm going to have bags, both front and rear. So ride height can be adjusted, as well as stance even. So I am actually just concerned in seeing how this cab is sitting in relation to the frame. And I'm thinking it's looking pretty good. The other thing I need to start looking at now is this body line here seems to connect with the bonnet or the hood. So I need to put a hood on and see how that ties into this. So let's see. Looks like this might have to move forward a little bit. It's close. Bit of a gap here though. So I think this needs to tilt a little bit. So I'm just taking a break from fighting with this thing and I'm playing here and it looks like with careful sanding I can get rid of that white to expose this uh, original color. It's like a I'm not sure what you would call this color, eh? it's like a blue-green, but I like it a lot. So I'm going to try and do this all over. <laughs> it's going to take a while, but I'll mess with that in between. <laughs> yeah, so I had to cut off those brackets I made for the initial fitment of my grill cell, shell. They were just causing problems. So now I've got the wheels off so I could get access. The frame is on jack stands. Um, and I'm now struggling still to get things to line up. I've still got this gap here, which is not right. So I need to figure out what to do to sort that out. Which means I need to spend some time in my thinking chair. Um, I tell you, in my mind, the most important part of a build like this is the correct positioning of all these various body parts and the cab and the fender and the grill shell to get everything to fit correctly in relation to the wheels and in relation to each other. Um, I also think it's actually the most difficult part of a build like this. Because uh, it takes a lot of fiddling and figuring and lowering and maneuvering and you've got to be central and symmetrical and up and down. Um, and once that's done, it's actually pretty straightforward because then you know where to build your cab mounts and all the rest of it. Um, and yes, I think it's important to spend quite a bit of time on this because it's going to determine the whole look of the car down the line, the stance, the aesthetics, everything else. So I need to figure out what I need to do next. I'm actually thinking that this cab needs to go forward a little bit more. Because the fenders are bolted on here now and they bolted to the grill shell. But I've got this feeling that the cab is almost like pulling the fenders and distorting it a little bit. Which is causing my problem up there. So I need to see what I must do <laughs> to get this cab to move forward some. But I can't go further forward currently because this part of my newly constructed floor frame is catching against the chassis right there. This is where the carrier bearing will be sitting for the prop shaft. Now I do need to still build a tunnel. So I need to cut this section out so I can go further forward. But um, I need to build something here first that will actually go and rise above that, if you know what I mean. If I just cut this out now, I lose my strength. I don't want to do that. 
So I don't have any tool that I can bend square tubing with. So it's back to basics for me here. <laughs> I made a pie cut every one inch or every 25 mil. And now I can do this. And I've made myself a template as well to make sure that I get the curve that I want. So I'm just going to tack this together. Let me just clamp it here. And then I can go and install this. I think I must just go and see how this is going to work and then I can weld it up fully. Okay, let's see. <clears throat> yeah, that looks good. So I can pick up these angles, cut this off and then weld it in place and then I can cut out this piece and remove it. And then finally I was able to move the cap forward some. It will also be the start of my tunnel construction down the line. No man, I'm tired of crawling in underneath every time and struggling. So I'm going to take off the straps. That's been holding this cap to the chain hoist. And this chain in the front as well. Then I'm going to take out my bolt here that's been holding things together. So let's open the door. Now I can get access. <laughs> and my frame is, my floor frame that I just built is holding thing every, everything together very nicely because look if I close the door again, my bracket lines up perfectly. And a bit of, bit of wiggling. I can get the bolt back in its place. That plan worked well, man. Okay, now I can easily get in here. And my curvy piece sits right there. I've got some marks here that I measured earlier so that it's in the middle. Okay, now I can tuck that into place. Well, I might as well weld it up fully, and then I can cut out that piece in there.
<laughs> well, that certainly was a very rough and a very horrible cut. But it doesn't matter for now. I've got my clearance, I can move this forward. And down the line, when I take the cab off again, I can clean that up and make it nice. <laughs> so I have been moving around this collection of rusty parts for hours now. Cab up and down a little bit, forward and aft, playing with the tilt of it, fiddling with the fenders and the hood and the grill shell. But I think I've now finally arrived at a point where everything seems to be connecting. This body line here is flowing nicely into the hood now. Um, fenders fist nicely onto the cap right here. Another important thing, this cap here between the grill shell and the hood is nice and equal and parallel now. So, um, Another thing, you might not see it in this angle, but the wheel is pretty much in the central position in relation to the wheel arch here. So that's working out. So I think um, I'm pretty much there as far as the orientation of all these parts <laughs> in relation to each other is concerned. So it might not look like much. But by adding this piece and cutting out and open this section here, this allowed me to move the cab forward about two inches. And that made all the difference for the lining up of all the different parts. Um, so it was definitely worth the trouble. It solved my problem. I have to retain this because the carrier bear, or the bearing carrier for the prop shaft bolts right in here. So I gotta have this in place. Down the line, we build a tunnel here. There is an issue with the gap here on the left hand side. But if you look carefully, you can actually see that this poor old thing received a knock at some point in its life. It's dented there. This is all a little bit mangled. Even the grill shell here is actually a dent here. And up here as well. So yeah, it kind of reminds me of my crooked finger. <laughs> At some point in its life, something happened, yeah. Um, I think about the only thing I can do about this, because the other side is good and everything else seems to be working out, is when I take all this apart again, I will uh, attempt a little bit of panel beating, <laughs> get hold of a hammer and dolly, and see if I can sort this out a little bit better, especially here and here, and see if we can improve it. If I don't get it much better, <laughs> who cares, it's just a rat rod. So check this, you might not be aware of this, and I certainly wasn't, until I started messing with this thing. So I released the bonnet catch here on the inside of the cab, and although everything is a little stuff, it still needs to be fine-tuned, it's still catching here a little bit. How about that? <laughs> the original hinge up there still works. So originally this bonnet of wood actually opened like that. I think that's quite cool, and here's the original catch that holds it down with a lever inside. Let me see if I can reach it through here. And there it pulls down. Still needs a little bit of fine tuning. But for the most part it's pretty much there, almost. Man, I tell you, I am very happy that I got to this point. Like I said before, as far as I'm concerned, the correct positioning of all these parts and the cab and everything is the most critical part of this build as far as I'm concerned. And I think I've said as far as I'm concerned twice already. <laughs> um, so I think I'm going to call it a day. I think this has been quite an achievement for me. 
Next up, I'm going to look at uh, cab mounts and brackets to actually keep these parts in place permanently. Of course, I still have to take it off again. At some point, we need to get the engine and the gearbox in there and see how that's going to fit in relation to everything else. But that's a story for another time. Thanks for spending time with me here in the shop. I enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, have a lucky one.